project. Uh, so basically, what we're doing in today's video is we're taking the Maverick and we are going to be snorkeling it. So what we've got here is the uh, OEM Maverick kit. There's a couple ways to snorkel these machines. I decided on this one because it's already done and made and ready for you. There's two other ways you can kind of snorkel these machines. You can either do it totally custom and get it the way you want it, but you're going to put a pile of work in. The other alternative is aftermarket, like snorkel your ATV. Those are available to you. Um, and then you obviously have OEM. I chose this because uh, literally we tear it apart. It's already made for the machine. The XMR version of this machine is literally identical, so we can install all of this on it. So uh, if you look at the box here, we have a little bit of tearing apart to do, get this whole box off, and then we start digging into it. While we're also doing that, obviously we're gonna take a look at some wiring and make sure some breathers are done right and so on and so forth, stuff like that. But uh, yeah, this is what we're doing. It's part of the Maverick build, so just like everything else, I am making a video of every modification so that when people inevitably ask, I can show them the playlist and uh, give them the answers that they want. So yes, you can put OEM snorkels on pretty much every Maverick, especially the X packages. Uh, it's quite simple, so we're going to start tearing into that. Pretty easy start. So essentially, uh, 15 mil bolts all along the cage. The only exception to that is behind this cover that you just pop off. There's a uh, 13 mil there. The whole bed is a bunch of torques, and I got another 13 here. These side covers come off. A lot of your airflow comes into both sides, and there's replacements for that to block them off because all of your air is going to come out here now. So we got all of these cracked off, and theoretically, we literally just lift this whole bed off, and we have access to the everything that we need. And uh, that's the name of the game today. Hopefully. Hopefully. But uh, we've got a pile of parts and they're all laid out right here for the snorkel kit. We have a bunch more to do right there that we just received and we're waiting on one more shipment today that I really hope shows up. One more. One more. One more very crucial one. Come on, Pure Later, man. So uh, we're going to have a busy weekend ripping and tearing on this because we're getting ready for FRCC. Hells right? yeah. You ready for that? If you guys don't know what that is. It's a huge event here in Saskatchewan that you guys are definitely going to see tons of video of. But I got to get this machine ready for that. And we're going to have a huge crew going to like a three day event. So it's going to be wild. And just like that, you have access to literally everything. I mean, a lot of this little floppy bits we can get rid of too if we so choose. I'm not dealing with that. But I mean, all of your air, so like you have all of these exhausts for like your CVT and stuff blowing on your header, all of that stuff. Um, you have access to literally everything and that probably took us, I don't know, what do you think? Like 10, 15 minutes? If that, yeah. The second time we could probably do it much faster, so. Yeah, we know which bolts hidden where they need to come out. Yeah, there's a few tricky ones underneath that you'll find. There's like four of them. And uh, yeah, you rip those off and all of a sudden everything comes out. But there is tail light plugs you have to remove. Unplug those and we Also, Can-Am, that harness that you made, why did you route it like that? I don't know why they did it like that either, but we'll do it a little differently. Got the clutch cover and everything off oh, to get the fill here. factory snorkels and everything out. I shouldn't say Why snorkels. That intake. Yeah. I don't know what that is. Oh. oh, hey, camera. Yeah. Um, we made a nice discovery. We've been uh, dielectric greasing all the connectors, and we finally figured out how to get this panel off behind the seats. Yeah, we were wondering how it came off because. Drake was letting me know that there's a heat shield there, obviously, because, you know, head pipe and such. Uh, but it turns out you just push the seat forward and it weasels out this way, so you can actually get to everything. Because at first I was like, what happens if I need to, you know, blow water out of the cylinders and pull the plugs and stuff? Like, we need to get to that cylinder. Like, 
Uh, and then obviously they did think about it. It's kind of the perk of rear mounted engines. That's why the center mounts are kind of just disappearing. But we got all of the crucial running bits and uh, that's definitely the way to go at it. We're gonna do a few other little things um, just so that when we don't splish splash in the water, we don't end up with some funny business or it turning off in the water or at least to try to prevent that from happening because it's a possibility. It's not what we want. Mm -hmm. And then I've been working on the intake stuff. So that's the big pile of factory. We don't like that. And uh, the kit comes with this block off plate because normally this is your intake for your clutch. That must be intake and what was the second pipe for? I am not I sure. I have no idea. They have a lot of pipes. They got a lot of pipes. There should only be three, yeah. but they're everywhere. But eventually it's gonna be a huge circulation pipe here for the clutch, so basically water has a hard time traveling into bits. Because right now, I don't know if that is still there. I think we already removed it. Yeah. But we would have had a wet clutch very fast. Yeah, it's really low. It's so ironically, factory, it's everything is very high except for that exhaust. Yeah, so I mean, either way, all of it's gonna be right here. And that's that's good with me. Good to go. So the mission continues to find every electrical plug in this thing, period. You're gonna miss one. Or two. I'm sure. Yeah. Headlights aren't important. If your headlight dies in the pond, I'm not concerned. I'm not either. We're starting the uh, fun part where we actually put stuff on. What I like about these processes is that you learn a lot about the machine, and that's one of the reasons why I like to do a lot of my own work. So, you know, we're we're in the machine and Let's say Drake and I are on the trail and X, Y, Z happens. We're like, oh, you remember when we did that job? We can, it's right here, right there. All we have to do is this, this, and that. And we already know a lot more about the machine. We're working our, our heads around it. Um, so at this point, we're starting to assemble and uh, we're following the BRP instructions. We're actually pretty thorough, to be honest. Uh, the only tricky part is differentiating between this model, that model, and this model in this location, for example, we, ha we saw the California model and it has one of those charcoal filters, eh? Because we were wondering what one of these plugs were for. Right here, there's a connector in this white tape back here, and I'm like, what is that? And then in the instructions right here, for them California people, they got an emissions charcoal canister, which yeah. bar for emissions. Yeah. So we don't have that, so you know, you gotta work around that kind of stuff. So a little bit of knowledge goes a long way, I guess, but ultimately, even if you're just kind of a handy fella or lady, you can basically dig into this and get it done. A um, little bit time consuming as far as just the little fiddly bits, but you know, Drake and I are pretty particular, so we're, we're our own worst enemies. That's an understatement. Yeah, but that being said, we know the job's gonna be done right and well, and we did it, and if something happens, it's only us to blame. So the other challenging part too with the instructions is they don't tell you what you need to use or reuse. So it's kind of just a guessing game of which clamp from the kit you got to use and which clamp from the factory ones you got to use. And some of it's kind of simple. Like we know we have to reuse this clamp because that's the same clamp that was already clamping something here before. So those ones are kind of obvious and some of them are already pre-bend like they actually pre-bend i squished that one. Oh, did you yeah okay, well that's drake so drake pre-bends the bands for us so hey whatever let's get it done we also figured out oh it's not there anymore the air filter for this is you can either put it in a lawnmower or you can put it in a uh, john deere skid steer it'll fit them all for any uh, heavy equipment types you're going to recognize this filter very fast Wix, Donaldson, whatever. You can literally pump in the number here. Yep. That, that's the BRP number, but it, you can find an equivalent so fast on the internet. So that's good to know because Drake here can get them for like 11 bucks. So yeah, <laughs> we, that's Canadian. So that's like a dollar yeah. US or something. So uh, if you want to save your Canadian pesos, just do a little googulating yeah. and you'll figure out that a BRP one is probably way overpriced for a paper rubber wrap filter. You're, you're laughing. Yeah. Well, I put food in my stomach. Yeah, um, here in the Mainville uh, garage, things drastically slow down after eating, so <laughs> we're just gonna dive back into it, as every other YouTuber says. Okay, so there's one very tedious, annoying moment where you have all of these pipes installed, and this pipe 
is the other half of this pipe essentially and there's a loop right here for your CVT exhaust um, so that the exhaust is way up here because obviously you don't want a wet belt but it allows air to come back down and blow on your exhaust system to try and cool it off a little bit make use of what you're already making but this pipe has these bands in it that are going to hold on to two other pipes and has to align up with a bunch of other stuff and then these two pipes have some holes to line up to mount it against the plastic and there's like a million things you got to line up so this is kind of one of those moments where you're like Ugh. it's such a simple thing but you know tedious right so once we get this part done it's really home stretch there's a few minor things we'll get into about breathers and whatnot but uh, we'll get there when we get there it's a matter of lining these guys up what we did is kind of pre-installed things as smart as we could so that you could actually ask, access all of the bands and then uh, we made sure everything was on there correctly and tight. There's a lot of guidelines and stuff. Uh, let's see, like this. This is what I like about the OEM kit. This lets you know that you're bottomed out and you're lined up correctly. So you're not gonna get that with an aftermarket kit or a custom kit like I was talking about in the beginning of the video. So this is where OEM tends to shine as long as the kit is good. Uh, an example of where it isn't good is the Outlander snorkels, for example. They are snorkels, but one thing it doesn't do is lift the CVT intake, I think it was. So there's sometimes there's, there's some quirks that don't make sense. This one, on the other hand, very good. Um, so I'm very happy with this. It's just a matter of getting it all done right. So that's what we're up to now. Okay, so you're going to see a new hose here. Okay, that goes to your water pump way down in focus. Focus. <laughs> Let me see. Let me see. Way down, just underneath there. So you're going to see some sort of strange inline filter that is for the coolant. But right underneath that gold bolt you're seeing there, you can kind of see it. That's where you're going to find a very short hose that has to be replaced with this long one. And now that we have that on, we're going to be following, yeah, there's the old one. That's the old. Some routing instructions that we have on the uh, cellular device over here. And uh, yeah, we got to get that specifically routed. And I think there's one more hose. There's one more hose and then I went down in the directions. There's a bunch of rerouting and T's and Y's and one-way check valves we gotta put in. Uh, we got the snorkel pipes on and figured out with that setup. It takes a little bit. Two guys definitely helps. There's some flexing and Yeah, I wanna show them the awkward angle. The awkward bit. Yeah. Right in here you'll see that rubber boot. So that actually blows air on the exhaust right here. Right, so exhaust comes out from your CBT, goes up the pipe. When we put the cover on, there's going to be a cover that brings these two together, puts air back down here, and then blows on your exhaust. But that is also holding on to the other two pipes. As you can see, they're all Right? And then these two have a little clip that go together. It's a lot easier to do it from the cab side. Now that we have those, we have the air box done. We rerouted all of the vent lines that are important. The only one that's not here is in the front and uh, that's the front diff. So it's already done and we coiled it up front. So uh, we don't have to run it all the way back here for no reason. So as of right now, this is all done. We dielectric everything, every little seal on every plug, just to kind of help out. It looks like Can-Am already did quite a bit of that. Yeah, there was some grease in some places. There but, was uh, not some grease in some places, but I think we got her covered. Am I ever glad I had your hands to help though? Why do I always have to be the one to bleed? Well, these finicky things, <laughs> they're ridiculous. You always end up getting the weird job for some reason, but... Well, we're both involved in the next one. We got to put the box bed back in. Right. So we've got to line up all the tabs, plug in the wiring harnesses, and the five snorkels all at the same time. I don't think it'll be that bad, but we'll get her. Well, you get the driver's side. You get four of the snorkels. I can do that for you. So, one thing I wanted people to understand is when you're buying this kit, I had expectations, so I'm going to assume other people will too. One thing to note, silicone. 
Okay, there's plastic pieces that go on it afterwards, but I just want people to know it's very malleable. There's a reason for that. So basically it's gonna sit over top of that pipe and it will eventually just sink right down and it's very nice that way. So this is the CBT exhaust I was telling you about. So it's gonna circulate in here and it also has a cover, right? So you're gonna have two of those and this recirculator. And uh, that's basically what's going on. We rested the bed and it really wasn't that bad. Having a friend obviously helps. But you're gonna notice on all of these snorkels here, um, they have a guide already built in. Every Maverick like this is gonna have it already. So you'll notice the plastic tabs have to pop over the bed. So you literally put the bed down and pull these up until they snap in. This one also has a ooh. You can see. So it's all snapped in there. So it's all well guided and it's really not going to go anywhere. So we put this stuff on and uh, we're really coming to a close here on this stuff. I just wanted people to see this because um, I had a lot of questions that just couldn't be answered unless somebody's done this before. So I thought I would do a write up so you understand like what a lot of this is, right? Because basically none of it is hard pipe except for the straight stretches. Um, which makes perfect sense. It was quite easy to work with, easy project. I think the more difficult part was just making sure we had all the vents done and the check valves and the filters and um, all of that sorted out and dielectric grease. Otherwise, this is a very easy job. So, so far, I absolutely suggest this. If five videos from now I swamp my machine because, <laughs> you know, these either suck or I installed them improperly, then I might have a different opinion, but so far, very, very happy with this stuff. You trying to figure it out or what? Yeah. Do those ever freaking look good though? Basically, when you slide these over, it's like a press fit into the plastic and it fits perfectly. And uh, you have little black parts that go on top here and then there's like a screen cage and a little center bit and that's what he's trying to figure out there now. Trying. But once we get this done, we basically do a double check and make sure everything's hunky-dory. There's one thing I don't really care for that I've noticed is this thing has a lot of wiggle. So I'm going to see if I can do something about that. But otherwise, yeah, dang. They basically don't take up a whole lot of vision from your rear view more than your seat would. Just a little bit more. And uh, they sit fairly low. But in the same breath, if you were going to do like a cage chop or something like that, it's perfect height. And right down the center, obviously, the rear view still works very well. But uh, that's basically what that snorkel kit looks like. I got to say, I, as far as where I stand right now, I highly recommend it. It is clean. It fits very well. The instructions on the website were very good. Um, overall, I don't know how long we've been at this, like four hours. I'd Something say, like that, yeah. Um, For a non-OCD person, probably three. Yeah, there was a few things we kind of moved and corrected while we were at it, and a lot of that was like grease time and stuff like that. But yeah, fairly simple job. Big fan. We'll see how it uh, turns out in the long run.